Okay, folks, uh, thanks for joining us another walkabout. Finally back out on the water. It's been way too long since my last paddle. Um, obviously, with all the fires we've had recently, that sort of uh, closed all of the national parks, and because of that, kind of made um, a bit of canoe camping pretty difficult. So, But now that the fires have kind of eased off, um, a lot of the national parks are starting to reopen, which is really good. And so I've um, managed to get out here for another weekend and do a little bit of a canoe trip. Um, I'm on the central coast of New South Wales to a lake that I haven't been before, so really keen to check it out. I've heard really good things about this place. Um, but we've have had a lot of rain over the last sort of couple of weeks, and this lake does fight a little bit. So it's going to be interesting to see how the, um, the campsites are, are fared because I know they can sort of get inundated with water. So interesting to see, um, yeah, see what they're like. But anyways, sort of getting towards the end of the day. It's a bit of a trek to get here. So it's about three o'clock now, and the sun sets about 7:30. So I want to get, um, yeah, get a bit of a wriggle on and try and find a nice campsite that uh, isn't flooded. I um, mean, get things set up. So. Should be a really nice weekend, so stick around. Well, not having much luck here. Um, from what I can tell, I think this campsite might be flooded because I can't even find it. Um, I think there's meant to be a, a steel fire ring and I cannot even, yeah, I cannot even find it, so I'm guessing um, it's underwater. So, which is pretty frustrating. So I'm gonna to have to paddle um, around the corner and see if I can find this other campsite. And um, hopefully that's a little bit higher in elevation and it's uh, yeah not inundated, but we'll see. Pretty cool to see all these uh, paper barks sort of growing out of the water. So yeah, I'm in sort of paper bark country. Um, so down sort of around Sydney and further south, you don't get paper barks. Paper bark trees, or um, Melaleucas, the scientific name, is um, it sort of stretch from Queensland all the way down to about here, so about the central coast. So yeah, where I sort of usually go camping, I don't really come across them too often, but it's kind of cool to see them in the natural environment. You always see them around the streets at home and stuff. Councils always tend to plant them, but it's actually nice to see them out in the bush. Yeah, I'm coming up in the other campsite. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed it's uh, not as flooded as, as bad as the other spot. Yeah, well, seems like a pretty nice spot. A lot less water, which is good. Um, yeah, heaps of room too to put some tents. Even a few trees I can string up the hammock between. So I think I'll probably, I think I'll probably sleep in the hammock tonight. I've also got my bivy, but I think I'll go with the hammock. Um, but yeah, it seems like a pretty nice spot, and yeah, that's where you get to wake up to, so, cannot complain. Um, I've also got a fire pit here, because obviously, I, mean, I guess it's nice to keep it contained sometimes, when you've got so many people camping all the time, it's nice just to have a fire pit, so, I'll have to use that. You also have to bring your own firewood, there's no collecting of firewood in this national park, so, I've had to log my own firewood on my canoe, which is a, a first for me, but, yeah, I think it should be a really nice spot to spend the night. Although there are thousands of mozzies, I'm getting mauled alive. And I'm usually the kind of guy that doesn't get affected by mozzies, but they are absolutely everywhere. So I'm very glad I bought my um, insect repellent tonight. Yeah, so anyway, uh, let's get it all set up. Gotcha.
All right, well now they've got that set up, I might grab a beer and jump in the canoe and go for a bit of a paddle because I think we might be in for a, a pretty nice sunset. But before I do that, I want to quickly show you guys something. So this tree is called a paperbark tree, or a melaleuca. Um, you see it growing all up and down the eastern seaboard, all the way from northern Queensland down to about Sydney. It sort of loves that kind of swampy, sort of wetland area. Uh, but it's got a fair few uses to it, so I'll quickly run through those with you. Yeah, so as the name suggests, uh, this bark is like paper, and it's really good for tinder. So if you just get a bit and then crush it up and then strike with the ferrocene rod, um, yeah, you have a flame in no time. It's pretty similar to your kind of probably birch bark for your northern hemisphere guys. Um, some other really useful things about this bark is indigenous people used to pull big strips off it and then lay it down on the ground as like a sleeping mat. It's actually quite soft. Uh, and also they would use it as a backing of a shelter. Um, and if they had a wound, they could use it to dress the wound as well. It's actually really good to cook with as well. So say if you catch a, a fresh fish, um, you get some bark, you soak it in the water, then you wrap the fish in that soaked bark and then um, you yeah, bury it underneath some hot coals for about 20 minutes and you'll have a, a freshly cooked fish. Uh, some other useful things about this tree is its leaves and inside the leaves is an essential oil and that has some really high antibacterial and antiseptic properties and I think when they first sort of discovered that in the early 1900s um, they far surpassed anything else that was on the market so it's really useful stuff. Um, these days they market it as tea tree oil and I carry a little vial in my first aid kit and it's great for cuts and bites and stings and things like that so yeah it's a pretty, um, pretty useful tree this one. Oh, this is so nice. Man, I've missed being out on the water. The wind sort of died almost right off and it's just starting to glass out now. It's absolutely gorgeous. All right, time to crack this open. So today I've got a Capital Brewing Co. Rock Hopper IPA. I think I've had this once before. I think it's a pretty nice beer. The other would be the trail, trail ale or something, that's really nice. Isn't that just the best sound in the world? Oh yeah, that's a nice beer. Now if you're wondering why I'm not fishing, it's because I'm in the sanctuary zone. So this section of um, the lake is a, is a sanctuary zone. Unfortunately, I would love to cast a line out, but it's pretty frustrating, but I definitely see the need for sanctuary zones because there's too many body people in the world and um, yeah, you kind of need to section off some parts of rivers and lakes just to give the fish a chance. It's actually kind of frustrating because a lot of these campsites that I've kind of planning to camp tonight and tomorrow I had in mind, they're all in the sanctuary zone. So for me to sort of go out and fish outside of the zone, it's probably about a two kilometer paddle that way. Um, and then tomorrow night I'm hoping to go further around the lake and camp a bit further around and same kind of deal. Then I'd probably have to paddle about two k's to go fish outside of it. So it's pretty frustrating. And for me to, like tomorrow's paddle, for me to get to the next campsite, it's all through sanctuary zone, so I can't even fish on the way to the next spot, which is really frustrating, because I would love to. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I've got a brand new paddle, which I'm so stoked with. Um, the brand's called Great Hour Paddle Company, and um, I think they're a Canadian brand. Um, I got it from an Australian bloke who runs a little company called Paddle and Portage Canoes, which I think is based around the sort of Nara Kangaroo Valley area on the south coast and yeah he's probably one of the only, like, the only guys that I know of in all this who actually gets good quality canoe stuff because in Australia for some reason we have a much bigger kayak culture and it's really hard to come across um, come across good quality paddles and canoes so if you're in the market for something like this definitely check out Paddle and Portage Canoes because um, that was pretty much the only place I was, I was um, able to find something like this. But yeah, it's paddle is an absolute dream. So much better than my crappy plastic and aluminium paddle. Um, this thing just absolutely glides through the water and it feels so nice in the hand as well. Uh, the difference a, a nice paddle makes. 
all right, well, that's enough of me up and on. I'm just gonna enjoy the sunset, drink my beer, and um, I'll get back to you guys when I'm getting the fire going. Darling, I know it's hard to let go. Soon I will hold you again. Longer days when I'm away, but we'll both pretend to be bold. Get some grub on. So keeping it pretty simple tonight. Um, just got some sausages. It's going to bread roll with some coleslaw. So nothing too fancy. Yeah. So the benefits of canoe camping. I mean, I could bring my bigger pan this time. So I'm not struggling with just that little hiking pan. So just chuck some oil on. Heat that up, and I'll get the snags on. So I've just got sausages in this little Ziploc bag that I froze last night. And just let it defrost throughout the day. Man, there are so many mozzies tonight. Um, probably the worst I've seen them, eh? They're absolutely hammering me before. Now I've got some insect repellent on and with a pretty smoky fire, it seems to be keeping them at bay, which is good, but my God, they were absolutely everywhere before. By the millions. So because I'm the only person here, they're just like, sweet, human, let's gang up on him. So, <laughs> pretty brutal. So we just cut some onion up. So make the coleslaw, I've just got a coleslaw mixed from coals. Then I've just got some Dijonais, I think it's called. So I'll just uh, combine that together. And I think it should be really nice. Alright, I think it's about done. Oh, I'm butchering this bread. Bread never lasts the best when it's stuffed into a pack. Not surprising. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a little bit of a struggle to get all this onto this small bread roll. Put some coleslaw on first. Now some of this delicious onion. And top it off with a snag. Oh, this is the most pathetic looking thing. <laughs> oh, I cannot even get the sausage inside the bun. <laughs> All right, well, this is a little bit of a fail, but anyway. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. It's definitely not the prettiest thing in the world, but it still tastes pretty damn good. All right, well, let's call it quits for now. Uh, it's, probably getting, it's probably about nine o'clock, so we can just uh, finish this off and then go to bed. So um, then we'll be up nice and early, and I'll see you guys then. Speed up. Nights 
Folks, I've um, just got myself some brekkie, so I've just got some Turkish bread, some avocado, some feta, and some duka. It's pretty uh, simple breakfast, but man, it's so tasty. Yeah, so last night's sleep was um, yeah, pretty interesting. The mosquitoes here are relentless. I've never dealt with anything as bad as this. They are everywhere. It seems like every mosquito in the world has descended on this spot. It's crazy. Like, luckily I bought a mosquito net with me. It's not specifically designed for a hammock, but I sort of managed to string it up and make it work, so it kind of covered my face. and. I kept most of them at bay, but there's still a few in there that just got trapped and they were just bugging me all night. So it was, um, it was pretty horrible. But if I didn't have that net, I think I would have been for a pretty hell of a night. So I'm very glad I bought that. But even just sitting here, like I've got insect repellent on me now and there are so many mosquitoes and there's big blowflies as well that bite like hell. So it's pretty um, uncomfortable to be honest, but it's what you get sometimes. You go in the bush, you don't really know what it's gonna be like. And especially after a lot of rain, in a damp environment like this, it can just bring out all those insects. And I'm pretty fortunate that most places I go, I don't really tend to get affected by them, so I can't really complain too much. Anyway, um, it's pretty cloudy today. I think there's meant to be a few showers on and off, but there's no wind at the moment. So I might quickly try and yeah, finish this off, pack the camp down and get back out in the water um, yeah, pretty quick and try and make way over to the next spot. So yeah, I'll get back to you guys in a bit. So if you're wondering what this little spice kit I was using when I was making my brekkie, this is called the Swagman's Pantry. Um, it's made by Mitch at Core Knife and Tool. We open it up, it's got these little glass vials where I keep my yeah, salt and pepper and my duka. So yeah, it's a really handy little bit of kit and it's such beautiful leather work too. Um, I did a little rundown of this stuff in my last video, but for those who haven't seen it, I'll just show you again. So this is a knife I got as well, which is called the Bushman. Um, such a, a beautiful knife. Really, really happy with it such um yeah awesome quality so if you're in the market for something like this definitely check out core knife and tool um, i'll chuck a link up in the description but yeah it's just a young bloke out of south australia and does some really nice work so definitely worth um yeah checking him out oh man look at that mozzie bite <laughs> that is a romper um yeah so i'm feeling pretty grubby so i want to freshen up so a great way to do that is to use the leaves in the acacia long folia uh, so if i just grab a handful of these leaves Try not to focus all on the same branch, try and take from different parts of the tree so that way you're not sort of harming any particular part of the tree. So I'll just grab a little palm full and I'll show you what to do with that. So we'll just get the leaves and then crush them up and then combine a little bit of water with it and then rub that together. You see you get a, a soapy lather form because inside the leaves it contains the saponin um, and that sort of is great for a soap so it's a really good way to yeah just freshen up when you're out in the bush you sure can get pretty grubby out here so yeah handy little tip Alright, well, I might quickly show you guys two of my favourite knots I like to use when I'm sort of setting up a ridge line because I didn't really show it very clearly yesterday when I was setting up the top. So if I take my leading end and then wrap it on the inside once and then twice and then three times and I come back around and then I put it through that loop I've just made. So then I can just slide that down and I can go to the other end now and tie the other side of the knot. Right, well now this knot I'm going to show you is for the other end. So if I've so I've got my 
tight line going around the tree there and I take my leading end and throw it over it. And if I pull that down to get some nice tension on the line. All right, so now when I come to this section, you'll see I've kind of created a triangle here. So then if I just hold down there and then I pull this line through that triangle and then give it a quick tug, tie that off. I can basically just hold that there as well. And then, so I've got this loop here, go down, grab the trailing end of that line, pull it through, and now it's nice and tight. And that's a quick release knot as well, so I can just go, and all comes undone. So that's called a tarp taut hitch, very useful knot. All right, so we've got another bit of bush tucker here. This is called a Smilex Glycophia, or a native sarsaparilla, or we can also go by the name of Sweet Tea. Um, so it's a sort of shrubby climber that you tend to find in sort of rainforest and these kind of tall, moist eucalypt forests. It's got a few uses, um, but first off, the leaves are edible. So if I just pick off one of the leaves and then just chew on it. It's got a very sweet taste. Um, it is slightly bitter, so it can turn some people off. Like I know my girlfriend's not a big fan of them, but I quite like it because it leaves a nice sweet taste in your, in your mouth after it. Um, so indigenous people would chew these to sort of uh, yeah, treat sore throats. Um, you can also make a herbal tea out of the leaves um, to sort of yeah, cure um, colds and flus and things like that. So I've also got these little um, black berries that are also edible. Uh, so I'll grab the camera and show you guys a little bit of a, a closer look at it. So you can identify the leaves by their lancelot shape. They've also got these three very prominent longitudinal veins going down the leaf. Also, the, the top side's sort of brighter and the underside's quite dull and they, they're quite leathery feeling. Um, also, the stems are sort of like a brownish stem and they're quite smooth as well. Um, I think there's some berries down here. Yes, and then down here we've got some of its fruit, so they're also edible. And as always with bush tucker, don't just take my word for it. Make sure you do your research before you go nibbling on anything in the bush because there's plenty of things out there that can make you crook or possibly even kill you. Um, so yeah, make sure you do your research. There's plenty of books out there these days you can buy and learn up on the topic. And I think it's something that's really beneficial to do because once you start sort of learning um, plants uses, like what's edible, what's medicinal, other things that you can um, utilize from the plant, it really makes you look at the bush in a whole new light and really connects you to the bush on a deeper level. So it's definitely something I worth recommend um, getting into. Darling, I know it's hard to let go. Soon I will hold you again. Longer days when I'm away, but we'll both pretend to be bold. such a beautiful lake system, I really like it here. The only issue I'm starting to have with it is there's so many body boats. Like as I'm saying this, there's another big cruiser coming up the lake now and it kind of kills the serenity. kind of wish there was a section of this lake that was just for paddlecraft only and no boats. It's really frustrating. But yeah, come out here to get away from all of that and just enjoy the serenity and then some guy comes rearing up the lake with a, a 40 horsepower motor on the back of him. So. Kind of, it's not quite what I had in mind, but uh, yeah, it kind of kills the serenity for me.
All right, well, I think I'm coming up to a potential campsite for tonight, so we'll pull in here and uh, check it out. So this is a campsite, nice and open and clear. A few trees I could probably string up the hammock between. And there's the water's edge just there. All right, well, I'm not quite sure what to do. Um, kind of think last night's campsite was better than this one. Well, this one isn't too bad, but yeah, yesterday's was definitely better. Um, so I'm trying to decide whether I should stay here, should I go back to the other spot, um, or should I continue on to another spot further around the corner, but that's another maybe 4K paddle away. And it kind of puts me smack bang right in the middle of um, the sanctuary zone, the fishing sanctuary zone. So when it comes to fishing, it's a pretty decent paddle to get out of that zone. So I don't know if I'm really keen for that. So whereas if I stay here, it's probably about a 3K paddle to get out of this um, sanctuary zone. So <sighs> decisions, not quite sure what to do. I'm gonna sit down and have some lunch and um, I'll figure it out. All right, well, this isn't a bad campsite, uh, but I'm thinking I might jump back in the canoe, go for a paddle down and get, get outside this fish sanctuary zone, go for a fish for a couple of hours um, and then sort of figure out what to do. Because there are a few spots down there, um, other campsites I could have a look at, or I could always come back and stay at the one that stayed at last night, or I could come back up here. So I might keep my options open for the moment, um, but I think the priority is, is let's go for a fish. That wind started to pick up now. I've also got some pretty dark clouds sort of rolling in over the mountains. Um, so I'm just going to move over to this little cove over here and give this a, a bit of a fish. Why don't we have much luck over there? So we'll go over here, probably fish this for another 45 minutes, an hour, and then um, I'll probably have to make my way back to try and find a campsite um, and get set up before this, this rain rolls through. So fingers crossed we're going to find something over here. getting pretty dark now and this wind's just kind of knocked me around a bit so it's kind of making my uh, fishing just a, a hopeless exercise so I'm gonna head back and we'll get camp set up. Alright, well I'm back at the original spot, but to be honest, it is a very lovely spot, so I'm not too upset by it. I just kind of wish now I left everything set up this morning, but oh, well, such is life. So, give me a few moments and I'll get that set back up. These boats are going to be the death of me. It's a beautiful place to come and camp, but there are so many body boats, especially when you're trying to film and you want some peace and quiet. Well, as fate would have it, as soon as I set the tarp up, it starts to rain. So on that note, I think I might grab myself a beer and lay in the hammock for the next half an hour until it passes. 
think I've earned myself a break. So as you can tell, Aussie hardwood is bloody hard. So just this little hatchet, um, sure puts it to work. Definitely needs something bigger than this, but this is all I have at home. So I'm used to not dealing with this harder timber. I'm used to just collecting stuff around the immediate vicinity, but obviously this national park um, requires you to bring in your own firewood. So I've done that. So I'm just gonna have to process it with what I've got. All right, so dinner time. Um, so we're gonna make some cauliflower tacos. And I know that sounds pretty easy, but I'm gonna make the tortillas from scratch. So we're using flour, salt, and a bit of water. Um, I do it all the time at home, and it turns out bloody delicious. So much better than the store-bought tortillas. Um, but I haven't cooked it in the bush yet, so we'll have to see how we go. So I'll grab the flour, um, and we'll start making up the tortillas. All right, so just got the flour here. I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt to this. that around. So let's make a little well. Now I know making Tortillas in the bush isn't, isn't exactly the cleanest thing in the world, but I thought I'd give it a go because I'm sick of taking bread in the bush and it going stale, so or breaking up in your hands when you're going to eat it. So I figured I'd give this a go. So I'm just going to break this into two now and I'll make two tortillas out of this. Because I don't have a rolling pin, I might use my bottle to roll it out. Oh, that's perfect. All right, so there's one. All right, perfect. There we go, got two tortillas. So let's put some oil in the pan and fry them up. Actually, before I do the tortillas, I might uh, cook up the cauliflower first. So that'll probably take the longest. So that's just cauliflower there with some oil in the pan and then some Mexican spice. Actually, 
actually there's probably enough room in this pan to cook the tortillas as well so I might try and do it all at once. Alright, they're done. Alright, I'm not quite sure how much faith I got in these tortillas. They seem a bit thick, like they might break up, but we'll give it a go. So first off, chuck down some avocado. And then some of the cauliflower. We got some coleslaw here. And then this is just a chipotle dressing. And let's top it off with some wine. And there you have it. Bush tacos. Cannot go wrong with that. Alright, well let's see how we go. <laughs> oh, I don't think I can even close this bread. Pretty tough. Yep, yeah, I think the tortillas are definitely too thick. They're not big enough either, so... We'll see how we go. In terms of taste, they're pretty damn good. The tortillas are definitely too thick, so less flour next time and thin them out. I have to remember that. Oh man, not bad though, not bad at all. All right, well I'm gonna make an absolute mess of this. So <laughs> I'm gonna stop filming for now and I'll catch you guys in the morning.
Well, good morning, guys, and what a beautiful sunrise. That was a really lovely way to sort of end the trip. Um, so I've just had some brekkie. I'm going to pack down camp now, um, try and get back in the water pretty soon because I've got a pretty big trek to get home, so I sort of don't want to dilly-dally too much. So I'll get that taken down, and I'll chat to you guys on the way out. Alright guys, well that's another trip done and dusted. I'm all packed up and about ready to paddle on out of here. So I just want to say a big thanks to you guys for watching. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I've had a really nice time. It's been a very beautiful place to come and paddle around. Even despite being mauled alive by mozzies, um, it's been still been a really nice trip. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it. Um, so yeah, if you're new to the channel and you like this kind of stuff, um, if you could give us a, a thumbs up and subscribe, that really helped me out. So anyway, till next time guys. Hooroo.